In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a character crouch and walk. I'm Xanderwood. I make indie games and tutorials on game development. I also play your indie games every week on my channel. Make sure you subscribe and click that bell icon so you never miss a video. Okay, welcome back to another easy game mechanic tutorial. Um, I've got some more comments and when I get comments, I make games or tutorials. First up, I got this comment from El Pendres Navi Deno, Dino, did I say that right? If I didn't, please let me know. And it says, please can I be featured for commenting bread? Well, yes you can, and here it is. Then I got a comment from Game Over Mexico, who's commented before and obviously likes my tutorial series, so commented again, so thank you for that. And the comment was, good tutorial. Do you know how to dash, tackle, and walk crouch? Well, not, not in life, because that's hard, but um, in game development terms, yes. And let's start with Walk Crouched because I'll do these in separate little tutorials to break them down and show you how they all work. So first of all, and most importantly, you'll see that I have now made my little green cube a little bit cuter. I've given him some eyes and some legs. And if we double click, I've given him an idle state, which if I play it, he just bobs his head up and down because, you know, why not? And then I've given him a walk cycle, which is just two frames, which is his legs moving in and out. And then I've given him a crouch walk cycle where he's very sinister with his eyes all squinty. And it's simply just the same walk cycle, but I've dropped the top cube down. So it looks like he's crouch walking. That's the only three animation states we're going to need in order to make this work and the rest is going to be done in the event sheet. So the first thing we need to do in the event sheet is create a group because the groups are going to store the different states that he's in. So we're going to need a walking state and I'm going to right click and add another group and we're going to need a crouch state. I'm going to do another one and we're going to do a crouch walk state. Now. These are the generic keyboard um, inputs that I have already. So I don't want these anymore because these are gonna do different things depending on what state he's in. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete those. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just program in the original walk cycle. So just the left and right and then playing the walk cycle. So we can add event to walking. We can say keyboard. On key is down. And that key is gonna be A. And I'm gonna copy that. And I'm going to paste it again and I'm going to change the A to a D. And I'm going to, oh, then I'm going to copy it again. And I'm going to copy it again. And I'll show you why in a sec. Okay, so we're going to add an action to if A is down. I'm going to go into player. And we're going to simulate control left. Then I'm going to copy that and drag it out and change that to right. So what we've got now is if, we put, if we're holding A, we're going to go left. If we're holding D, we're going to go right. What we also want to do when we push A is we want to change the animation. So we're going to click on him and we're going to set the animation to walk. So just the regular walk. And we're going to copy that and paste the exact same animation into when D is down. But all we're going to do is flip him if we're holding A and then unflip him if we're holding D because he automatically defaults right. So if we mirror him, when we push A, we've also got to tell the system to unmirror him when we push D, otherwise he'll just stay mirrored. And now what will happen if we play that is he will walk to the right nicely, but then if I take my finger off the keyboard, he just stays in that walking animation because we haven't told the system to do anything with him. And if I push A, he walks the other way. And while I'm at this stage, it's worth pointing out and this is a, a mistake that I made a lot when I was first doing walk cycles is the frame that you start with is very important if I start with the frame with his legs open which is the same as my idle state it's not going to look as good and I'll leave it like that for now and I'll show you what happens when I program in the idle state so we'll come back to that in a second now what I want to put in now is what's going to happen to the animation state if we're not holding any keys down. So I'm just going to change this D here to an A and I'm going to drag it up into that one so they're both in the same event. 
I can delete that empty one. Then we need to change them to inverted. So push I. So this is basically saying now, if the keyboard is not, if we're not pushing D and we're not pushing A, what do we want to happen? So well, we want the player to change his animation to idle. Now I can show you what I mean with the animation. So if I tap D, you can see that he's not entering a walk cycle. He's just scooting along the floor with his legs. But if I hold it, he then goes into a walk cycle. So it takes a second, you know, and if you're really just creeping up to an edge, it's not going to look very good. So one easy little fix that you should do is in the walk cycle, always start the first frame with the legs in a different position. So now when you tap D, it looks like he's kind of edging up to something and then he continues on. And now when I let go, he goes back into his idle state, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want. And that's going to be our walking state. Now we need to do the crouch state. So I'm going to add an event. I'm going to go to keyboard and I'm going to say if key is down and this time it's going to be S, which is the crouch in the WASD kind of sequence. So if we're pushing um, down, if we're holding down, then we're going to set the player animation. We're going to set it to crouch walk. Now it's time to go back to the player and add an instance variable. And um, we want to set this to state in the name and then in the type it needs to be a string because this is what we're going to set the different states with. So leave it blank when you uh, when you put it on and then go back to event sheet one and then right click just underneath all the groups um, and we're going to add an event. We're going to say system and we're going to say on start of layout so when the, the level begins we're going to go player and we're going to set his state. So we're going to set the value here of state to idle. Because when we start the game, he's going to be just stood there idling. Um, and then we can change it based on what we're doing. Let's add another event. And we're going to say keyboard, key is down. And we're going to say S, which is crouch. And I want to invert this. So if we're not holding the S key down, then we're going to go player and we're going to set value of state back to idle and I'm going to drag that up underneath here because this is all going to happen at the beginning. In fact what I might do is add a group and I'm going to call it setup. So this is what sets up at the beginning of the level. I'm going to drag these two in. So now we're going to start him in an idle position and also at any point in the game if we're not holding down S he will be in the idle position. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some text so we can debug it in real time. We'll pop it there and I'm just going to call this debug. Just so we know what's happening I'm going to pop it up there. I'm going to delete whatever the text is in there at the moment. And then I'm going to go in here to add action. I'm going to click on debug text and I'm going to set the text, there it is, and this is going to say idle, and I'm going to set it to idle there. So when we start the level, it's going to tell us what state we're in. Now, I'm going to copy that whole block, and I'm going to just re-invert it so it says if we are pushing S, then we're going to set the player state to crouch. And in fact, what I'm going to do is to save extra lines of code, I'm just going to set this, instead of setting it to the exact same thing up there, I'm just going to set it to the player state. So I can set it to player.state. And that'll be easier than typing everything out again, because that will then automatically change the text to whatever the state is. So now, he's idle. When I push down S, he goes into crouch. Then I let go. It goes back into idle. So it's telling us what state we're in, which is quite useful, so we can know exactly what we're doing. Now we need to program in the walking state. So I can copy this block and I can change this to A. And what I also want to do is right click inside here, just in this little bit, um, this little bit of text here, and I'm going to add a condition. And I'm going to say keyboard is down 
and I'm going to say D. So this is very similar to what we did down here, except this is saying that if A is down and D is down, then we set the state. But we don't want it to be an AND block. We want it to be an OR block. So we want it to be A or D. So if we're pushing A or we're pushing D, then we change it to walking. And to do that, we just push Y and it changes it to an OR block. So if either of these two keys are down, then we're going to set the player's state to walk. Now, we're going to run into an issue if we leave it like this because we can be walking in a walking state and we can be walking in a crouch state. So we need to add a sub event to this one. So select the whole block, push B, and then we can go down here and we can say uh, keyboard and we can say key is down and we can push S and we can invert it and then we can drag these two down here. So now what we're saying is if the A key is down or the D key is down, so effectively if we're moving left or right but we're not crouching then we go to walk and then we can copy the whole block here, re-invert the S and then change this to crouch walk and let's test it out. So I'm walking left and right, I'm idling, I'm crouching, and now I'm crouch walking. So that's great. Now we know exactly what the player is doing in terms of his instance variable. Now we can just assign those to the groups and make them active or deactive based on what we want to do. And I know that he's not walking in his crouch walk, but we can change that because we haven't done anything down here with it. Okay, so now we need to do this. We need to copy this down, A and D, we bring it down into crouch walk. We're still going to move left and right, but we're not going to play that animation. We're going to change that animation to crouch walk. And he's still going to be flipping because we're moving left and right. So now when we're crouch walking, if A is down, then we're going to play that animation and we're going to play and we're going to mirror him or not mirror him. Right, now let's look at the top here in the setup. Now we're going to get a conflicting statement because he's in a crouch position. He can be still or he can be walking. Now, what we've got in the code up here is that if we are holding down, we're going to set him to crouch. Now we're going to run into an issue because if we're holding down, he's going to be crouching. But if we're holding down and moving left and right, he's going to be crouch walking, which we've got down here. So what we need to do up here is almost a reverse of what we've done here and sub event the A and D actions. So we're going to say keyboard, key is down, A. And then we're going to right click and add a condition and we're going to say keyboard key is down D and we're going to invert those and we're going to change them into all blocks. So what we're effectively saying here is if we're holding down but we're not holding A or D down then we're just crouching and we're staying still. And then we say if A and D is down but we're not crouching, then we set to walk. And if A and D is down and we are crouching, we set to crouch walk. So may maybe pause the video, just have a read through that a couple of times if it's not making sense. Right, now let's create another group. And we're gonna call this one states. I'm gonna drag it up to the top here, underneath setup. And this is gonna tell the system what state to be in based on what we're doing. So we're gonna add an event and we're gonna compare the state of the player. compare instance variable state. So if state is equal to idle, then we're going to tell it to do something. Copy and paste it down. Change the state to walk. And there they are showing up there already. Copy it again. Change the state to crouch. Copy and paste it again. Change the state to crouch walk and there's our four different states so if we're in this idle state then we need to go to system now just start typing in group and we're going to set group active and the group we're going to set active if we're idling um, actually we don't need to do anything with that we're going to go walk and we're going to go group set active and we're going to set walking active. Copy that down and change walking 
to crouch. Copy that down and change crouch to crouch walk. However, it's not enough just to set them active. We need to deactivate the other groups. Um, so what I can do, drag the walking down and set that now deactivated. So when we're crouching, we're activating crouch and we're deactivating walking. Same with crouch walk, we're deactivating walking because we don't want those conflicting statements. Now I can drag crouch up and deactivate this. I can drag it down to crouch walk and deactivate that there. And then crouch walk I can drag up and deactivate and drag it down there, deactivate it. So now he's walking, he's crouching, but he's in an animation which we can fix in a second, and he's crouch walking. There we go. However, we've got a couple of things <clears throat> that we can fix. We've got a couple of things we can fix now. When I let go of the keyboard in crouch, he doesn't come back up to idle until I push um, A or D. So I can let go of the keyboard if I push A or D, it comes back up. You may want that, you may want him to stay permanently crouched. And we also need to fix the fact that he's kind of walking on the spot there. So up here in the setup, this is where we're going to fix the permanent crouch. So we've got here that if S is not down, we set the state to idle. But we haven't told the idle state what to do when, when that's happening. So I think what we'll do down here is we'll add in the action and we'll say player and we'll say set animation to idle. And that will be all we need to do if he's idling. Yeah, so he's crouching, I let go, he stands up. He's walk crouching, I let go, he stands up. Perfect. Now we all need to, now all we need to do is fix the permanent walking on the spot. So what I, what I think I'm going to do to fix that is I think to simplify things I'm going to click on him and I'm going to set him just a standard crouch animation. So we go over here, you can duplicate, duplicate crouch walk, just call it crouch. We can just set it to one frame, so we'll delete frame one and it will be just the one frame. You don't need to play around with the speed because it's only going to be one frame. And then we can go back into the event sheet because now we have a new animation and we can say Here, if state equals idle, no, that's not what I'm looking at. If state equals crouch, then we will just go player, set animation, just to crouch. And that's it. Walking left or right, crouching, crouch walking. And that's how you make a crouch walk animation cycle. If that was helpful, then please give a thumbs up and like the video and subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. I do tutorials and I do I play your indie game videos and I'm making a devlog as well. So if you're interested in some of that stuff, then stick around. There's lots to come. I do post three times a week um, or I try to post three times a week. So far, so good. So stick around and it'll be great to see you in the community. And if you've got an idea for a future um, easy game mechanic video, then please do leave a comment and I will shout you out. And hopefully, if I can, I will make that tutorial for you.